Boris Johnson is faced with a bit of a very, very dodgy balancing act because traditionally Tory voters have been pretty much the court down in the south of England, known as the Blue Wall, versus the new people who have voted uh, Conservative for the very first time to, quote, get Brexit done up here in the much talked about Red Wall, where both groups of people have very different needs, wants, and and where they view the idea of Brexit being fulfilled. And there's no greater um, example of this dilemma that Boris is in, where he won Hartlepool in the north, again, braced, based on the continuing saga of, of pushing Brexit and it being, you know, it, it's going well and, quote, we're getting it done, versus when you look at the Chesham and Amisham by-election of where, again, a Tory stronghold for well over a hundred years, and yet that went to the Lib Dems. Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party are walking a very, very narrow tightrope. Because if they start giving things to the North, then they lose their southern base. And if they, let's say, transfer to the North, well then that southern base suddenly becomes Lib Democrats, which basically means they then have no majority to win in the next election. Whereas if they start to lean back to their southern base, then it's more likely that northern base will just go back to Labour Again, at the next election, there will be a lot of people switching back to Labour because, like I say, Brexit's a done issue by that point. And if Boris is still saying, oh, we need to get Brexit done, well, hang on, you said about the deal, how wonderful it was, how everything would work out, and how, like, Brexit has been done. Well, if you're still there at the next election in three years' time saying, oh, we still, you still need to vote for us to get Brexit done, then... What were you doing since 2019? You know, <laughs> like I say, people in the North aren't idiots. They will they will cotton on um, to what's going on. And like I say, a lot of people will go back to being um, Labour voters. Like I say, a lot of those Northern seats they won were won on some very, very slim majorities. So the idea that many of those... Um, conservative and um, that they're going to keep the red wall is a bit of a fantasy so when boris has to now start playing to the red wall to keep those seats he starts to lose southern seats and if he starts playing to the southern seats then he loses northern seats and thus the toy majority is in a complete chaos but what we seriously need to do is first of all either a the lib dems need to seriously sort their messaging problem out I, I still maintain that they still have a serious messaging problem and labor need to sort themselves out and actually find out what policies they are going to push and actually say this is what labor is for so we're going to talk about more about boris johnson's very very strange dilemma and why he may indeed want to keep the chaos going at least until the next general election so uh, before we do jump into that, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So, on with the article. So this comes from The Independent. The title is, Boris Johnson has no intention of unifying the country over Brexit. Division suits him far more. So Boris Johnson marked the fifth anniversary of the Brexit referendum today by saying, as we recover from this pandemic, we will seize the true potential of our regained sovereignty to level up the country and the whole United Kingdom. Nope. However, his actions tell a different story. He has no intention of uniting the country over Brexit. It suits his narrow party interest to prolong the divisions rather than to actually heal the wounds of the 2016 referendum, which would be in the national interest. Some Tories justify this on the grounds that Labour elected an arch-remainer in leader Keir Starmer, the architect, architect of the party's support for a final say referendum. The reality 
is that Johnson smells Labour's weakness and wants to keep the issue that won him the last election alive, at least until the next one. And so shamelessly misrepresents Starmer's position as wanting to take the UK back into the EU. Knowing that Brexit will have... Uh, will have faded by the next election, Johnson has built on top of his 2019 foundations of a divisive culture war, hoping that this will at least entrench Tory support in the Red War. As one minister told me, if there's a strategy and it's, if there is a strategy, it's about locking in the kind of voter who was attracted by UKIP. Starmer has a dilemma. The opposition has a duty to expose the holes in Johnson's threadbare trade deal with the EU which have been eclipsed by the coronavirus pandemic uh, and is also under immense pressure from Labour's overwhelmingly pro-Remain membership to promise closer links with the EU. But Starmer's strategy is don't mention the war. He knows there is a route back to power. He knows there isn't a route back to power without regaining the Red War and he is right to resist the internal demands. But there is little public appetite for either looking back or reopening the EU issue and Starmer should promise to make Johnson's deal work better without handing the Tories more ammunition for the next election. And Johnson has also breathed life into the Brexit issue by picking fights with the EU. Judging that Brussels bashing is still plays well to the Red Wall, he and his Brexit minister David Frost fake surprise and regret that the UK-EU relationship has disintegrated. They play the naughty boys in the playground, protesting innocence and telling the teacher they didn't start the fight. They complained that Brussels resorts to quick, uh, too quickly to threats, still dining out on a foolish move to suspend the vaccine export from, Northern, from Ireland to Northern Ireland in the latest last three hours, while they still threaten to suspend all or part of the Northern Ireland protocol. It's as if the UK hasn't left us, and it's all about point scoring for the domestic audience, groans one EU source. Johnson and Frost also feign surprise at the way the EU is implementing the protocol. Some UK officials claim that Johnson didn't understand what he signed up to in 2019, and I doubt it. It's worth remembering what a backbencher called Boris Johnson told in the 2018 DUP conference when he railed against Theresa May's backstop, which would have kept the UK and the EU in the customs union. We are witnessing the birth of a new country called the UKNI UKNI, and it is no longer exclusively ruled by London or Stormont, but it is in large part to be ruled by Brussels. We will be damaging the fabric of the Union with regulatory checks and even customs checks between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It in itself is evidently not taking back control of our laws. And Johnson was right. The only problem is that it is he who has made this nightmarish scenario come true. One minister admitted that Johnson's strategy on the protocol was to hope it would be all right on the night, and it was never going to be. Brexit broke the mould of British politics by loosening the, the traditional party loyalties of many voters. While this has enabled Johnson to capture the Red Wall, his flagship policy may yet return to haunt him. The people of Scotland and Northern Ireland voted to remain in the EU, and Brexit has given the Scottish independence movement a bigger, boost, a bigger booster shot than ever. Um, and the immediate crisis in the Northern Ireland Protocol will likely be postponed, but it will be back. The history books might very well mark Brexit as the crucial milestone on the road to, to a united Ireland. By prolonging the Brexit war, Johnson risks alienating some of his natural Tory supporters and young voters his party will need. Last month's local elections in England and last week's Chesham and Anisham by-election showed that some of the Remain voters recoil from Johnson's Brexit-based populism. And in 2019, the Tories won the backing of 20% of at least of the 2016 Remainers. And the 10, uh, 10 seats they lost all voted Remain in 2016. And a study of, Bre of Britain's Brexit tribes published by Ipso Mori suggests that just as many people sit in the middle of the Brexit battleground as the polarised Leave Remain camps. If Johnson really wants a one-nation conservative, as he claims, he should actually start to find a national message that resonates both in the red and the blue Tory wall in the south, and stop refighting a Brexit war that should have ended five years ago. And he won't. Um, he won't because that's what Johnson likes. He likes the chaos, and he likes the fact that he 
he won the Red Wall. That will be his ultimate, you know, potential swan song. But as I said, those seats in the North were won on some very small margins. They were the average margin that they were won about was about two thousand, and that may sound a lot, but that's not a lot. And especially with the boundary changes coming in, where we're going to see like new seats created or some seats lose about two to three thousand votes all of a sudden that can change politics in the north very very significantly and as we said before he's on a very tight rope where if he appeals to the north he alienates his traditional tory base in the south where if he starts playing to them he loses the red wall and there is no one message that the Tory party can put out because, again, we've seen their ideology and how that ideology is going to play out. We know austerity is going to come back. And the second austerity starts to come back, he will immediately lose all those seats in the North because no one in the North want, liked austerity. No one voted for it. And if Johnson is seen to be re-implementing austerity, which he is and will be, he will immediately lose all those seats in the North. So who knows what may happen at the 2019 general election. It is right that the British political landscape is still in massive upheaval. And the idea that Johnson is pushing this populism really is not in favour of his traditional Tory base. They are recoiling from it in some serious horror. Again, the Chesham and Amersham by-election is a perfect example of this it was a tory seat that had been tory for over a hundred years suddenly goes lib dem so who knows what may happen in three years time who knows what incidents may be happened between then and there and also we've got the coronavirus report which will come out before the next election which is not going to be kind to the tories in any way shape or form so as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel. And of course, we'll see you all next time.